G'day, Shah here once again with four wheels on the road, helping you get the most out of your time away. This trip away, I wanted to have a chat with you about something that's important to me right now, and that's things you need to think about when you're doing big trips away. The top five things. Something that's important right now because we're on a big trip ourselves. We're just here at Island Lagoon, just south of Woomera in South Australia. So let's take a look. Top four things I'd definitely say go under the heading of preparation. Number one of which is think about fuel. It's something that seems like it's really, really simple, but there's a couple of things that are a little bit more in depth that you really need to think about. You're not always going to be traveling in the middle of the day. Sometimes you might even be traveling at night. And if you're from the city, especially like I am, it's something you really need to give some thought to because we're used to just having large service stations that are open all the time. But out here in the country, a lot of service stations that are in in-between stops, in between large towns or city centres, they're actually just sort of small stops that are run by, you know, small business owners. So they're only open during the day. They might only open at 8 o'clock in the morning. For example, the other day, when I started at Broken Hill and went down towards Adelaide, there are a lot of fuel stops along the way that were actually closed. So I knew that this might be the case, but I filled up in Broken Hill and passed through about five different fuel stops that were all closed. I did leave at four o'clock in the morning, so it was an odd time to leave, but you need to think about these things because you won't always be traveling at normal hours. You might be traveling at seven in the morning, you might be traveling at six at night. It's something you really need to give some thought to. There are apps that are available for fuel stops. I'll put a link to one of those on screen for you, just so you've got that on hand. These sorts of things are really, really handy because they actually have links to how much the fuel is, what their opening hours are, and where they actually are, which is really, really handy. The second thing to really think about is food and water. Again, it seems like a blatantly obvious thing, but it's something as city folk that we become quite accustomed to just being able to go to Coles and just get food whenever we want. Every town that you go through might not necessarily have a Coles. There might be an IGA or something, but there might also be a tiny little store. So they might not actually have the food that you're after or the volumes of water that you're after as well. So make sure that you have a look. You can check out online, for example, if you're used to going to Coles as I am, you can check out Coles near me and you can just look and see where all of the coal stops are on your route. And that'll let you know, for example, just for that shop, where they actually are. Then you can also check out a lot of the small towns do have IGAs. So it makes it really easy for people who are not really caring what they get or where they get it from. They can just go to an IGA or a Coles but I really wanted to make mention of this point for people who are used to getting things specifically from a specific store, as I am. <laughs> so there's that to consider. The number three thing that I'd like to get people to really give some serious thought to is stopping along the way. There are certain apps that are available. Again, I'll put a link for you on screen to places that you can stop. The beautiful thing about big journeys like what I'm doing right now is that a lot of places, for example, where we are here at Island Lagoon, there's a little rest stop here. It doesn't necessarily have too much. It's just got a table and chairs and bins, but a lot of the stops also have toilets. Uh, some even have showers. So you can stop here overnight. They are pretty close to the road, so they're deliberately put that way so people don't, you know, park here and, and live here <laughs> because it's a little bit too much for road noise but they're specifically put here for people who want to have a inexpensive way to stop overnight and don't necessarily want to have a caravan park as I've been doing personally on this journey I've stopped at a couple of caravan parks but from here on in I'm just going to be doing stops at roadside stops like this and doing it for free so the great thing about this country is that you've actually got this sort of thing that's available to you and you can just stop on the side of the road anywhere, spend the night overnight, and you can do that for your entire trip pretty much if you like, which is great. So 
If you had have checked out those apps, you can check out where these stops are and you can also check out whether they're free, whether they're paid and what facilities they actually have on hand for you. So that's super, super handy. The fourth point that I'd like to make mention of is something a lot of people will not actually think about. Or you may think about it, but not to the degree that you actually should. And that is road conditions. As city people, we're just used to being able to look on a map and say that we can drive somewhere, plot a course in Google and then go. We just assume that the road's going to be fine. But there's a couple of really big factors within this point on road conditions that you won't obviously think about. First of all is, is the road in good enough condition to actually drive on? A lot of the roads that are out here in the outback are actually pretty old roads and some of them can be damaged. They can be damaged by floods or just general wear and tear. And there's quite often a lot of work going on on roads in the outback. As you would have seen from this footage here, there's a couple of places where there's road works going on in our journeys that we've had towards South Australia here. What you should do is actually check out some websites before you get on the road. I'll put some links for you on screen here for an example. And what they'll do is they'll let you know if roads are open and they'll let you know the condition of the roads and if they're drivable and passable. If you don't check the conditions of roads a lot of the time, you'll see firstly that they may not be actually open and second that they may actually have roadworks currently going on in them and you can be stuck at roadworks for you know half an hour an hour and lose a little bit of time and if you're on a really tight schedule with driving to somewhere to get to there by night time you really need to consider these sorts of things the next part under this heading is that you should also check whether the roads are sealed or not and this is another thing as city people that we really do not give any thought to at all when we come to the country. Again, under these links that I'll put on screen for you here, you can check out if roads are sealed or unsealed going to a certain part of the country. Again, this might be a consideration for people if you're just driving in a regular sedan, if you don't happen to be in a four wheel drive as we are all the time, it's something that may take a little bit of time again out of your schedule but it might not also be passable so if you make a choice to go along a certain route and you're driving in a sedan you might come across suddenly a dirt road that's corrugated to hell and it might not be passable in your sedan so you might have to turn around after going an hour in one direction and then come all the way back and go around a different way so you really need to give some thought and some consideration to that before you set off. The fifth consideration that I'd like to get people to really think about before they set off on the road is to be flexible. Something that I've had to learn myself on this journey, I had a certain lot of places and a certain list of places that I was actually going to go to. And I'd done all of the, the things that I needed to do. I checked where the roads were sealed. I checked the road conditions before I left. But what actually happened was when I got to a particular place. For example, I was going to go to Menindee Lakes and I decided to abort that mission because of the amount of rain that we've had through here. And I checked a little bit of the road and it was really, really badly corrugated. Plus I spoke to people on the road as well and they said it was really, really choppy through there. It's just something to think about for yourself. A lot of people may be driving just a sedan. So, you know, just something to think about. All right, well, I hope that's given you some serious things to consider when traveling remotely here in Australia. If you've got any feedback, please don't forget to leave a comment down below and also like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share the channel. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time we get four wheels on the road.